So now let's look at the radius. This is a bone that lies on the lateral aspect of the forearm. And again, we've got anterior, posterior, and a medial or an ulnar view, which we can see on this, in this picture here on the slide. The ulna is, I'm sorry, the radius is shorter than the ulna and it's positioned more laterally. Proximally, we've got some details I like to talk about. We've got the head of the radius, and that is going to articulate with the capitulum of the humerus. But importantly, the head also articulates with the radial notch of the ulna. And these two bony features, articulations with the capitulum, articulations with the radial notch, allow a complex arrangement of movement. So we can see we have flexion of the elbow joint, and we also have the ability to supinate and pronate, where we turn the forearm over. The two bones of the forearm can turn over. And that's supination and pronation. We'll talk about that later on. But this is allowed to happen because of the bony features we can see on the radius. So the head of the radius here is going to articulate with the capitulum of the humerus. And then the head of the radius also articulates with the radial notch of the ulna. So we can see the head here. We can see the head on this posterior view and also on this um, medial or the ulna view of the radius. The shaft, again, has got this sharp interosseous border, just like the ulna did, allowing the interosseous membrane to articulate. And the shaft of the radius is going to widen quite distally as it passes towards the elbow joint. And again, we have a radial styloid process that can be palpated on the lateral aspect of the radius. If we have a few more details looking at this distal end of the radius, then we can see we have an ulna notch we can see here, and this allows articulation with the head of the ulna. We can see this clearly on the medial view, which is the ulna view, so we can see that clearly here. We've got the ulna notch allowing articulation with the head of the ulna. As I've mentioned, we've got the radial styloid um, process, and we've also got the radial styloid notch as well, most laterally within the radial. We also have what's known as a dorsal tubercle, and this dorsal tubercle is important as it acts as a pulley for the extensor muscles of the thumb. And we'll cover this in more detail when we look at the um, extensor muscles within the thorearm. And this, important to remember, this dorsal tubercle on this posterior surface of the radius, allowing various muscles to attack the joint at a slightly different angle. So here we can see a whole series of, of bony landmarks on the radius. You just completed your first video of the world's best medical exam preparation. Lecturio brings the knowledge of worldwide leading medical experts and teaching award winners to your PC, tablet, or smartphone. Prepare yourself and check your progress with thousands of quiz questions customized to USMLE standards. And the very best you can get in touch with our medical experts personally. Visit Lecturio.com now and continue with the most inspiring medical education around the globe, anytime, anywhere.